Welcome to Inkpot. In this video, we will be discussing some additional measures of central tendency or some additional location measures. Measures such as quartiles, percentiles and deciles give us finer measures of location. So, where we can understand by calculating these, where is the data starting and ending roughly. So, just like a median divides the data into two equal parts, we can calculate a quartile which divides the data into four equal parts. So, quart means one by fourth here. So, one quartile is dividing data into four equal parts. So, basically we will have Q1, Q2, Q3 known as the first, second and third quartiles which are dividing the data into four equal parts. You will note that Q2 is nothing but the median because Q2 is dividing the data into two equal parts, right? So, you have two parts here and two parts here. So, it is performing the same function as the median. The percentiles divide the data into 100 equal parts. Percent means 1 by 100. So, the percentile divides the data into 100 equal parts. You might have heard percentile ranks in a lot of entrance tests, in the results of entrance, entrance tests. So, a 99th percentile means that there are 99% people who have scored below you. Only 1% people in the entire test taking uh, population is above you and 99% people have scored below you. So, 99 percentile is considered a very high score. Percentile score and percent score are different. So, you can get uh, 60 percent but you may still be 99 percentile because if, if, if a lot of people have scored below 60 percent then you will be in that 99th percentile. So, be careful about the usage of percent versus percentile. Similarly, we have deciles and quintiles. Deciles divide the data into 10 equal parts and quintiles divide the data into 5 equal parts. Quintiles are used commonly in uh, income distribution data. So, we report the first quintile that is the first 20 percent, the poorest 20 percent or the top quintile, the richest 20 percent and so on. We calculated the mean and the median and realized that the mean is too sensitive to outliers. It gets pulled in the direc direction of the outliers while the median is completely insensitive because it does not take into account the outliers at all and it focuses only on the middle observation. So, we would like to kind of get a middle path and calculate a trimmed mean which is neither too sensitive to outliers nor is it completely insensitive to the outliers or to very large values. So, to calculate a trimmed mean, let us say a t percent trimmed mean as the name suggests, in a trimmed mean, what we are doing is we are throwing out the largest and the smallest few values and then calculating the mean. So, the mean which was getting affected by those very large and very small values will not get affected that much because they will be thrown out of the sample before calculating the mean. So, the t percent trimmed mean denoted by x bar trim t is obtained by topping is obtained by trimming the top t percent observations and the bottom t percent observations and then calculating the mean. So, if we have data of this sort we will throughout the we will specify a t percentage first the desired percentage let us say maybe we, we are interested in a 10 percent trimmed mean or a 20 percent trimmed mean. So, we will calculate the 20 percent trimmed mean, uh, we will throw out the 20 percent top values and the 20 percent bottom values and then calculate the mean. The exact steps to calculate the trimmed mean are as follows. Sorry. The first 
step is to arrange the data in ascending order. So this data that is being presented here is already in ascending order. Calculate the n times t percent. So n here is just the sample size and t percent is the desired trimmed mean percentage. So here let's say t is 10 percent and our uh, sample size as you can count is uh, 26. So our desired trimmed observations would be 2.6. Now obviously 2.6 is not a whole number so we cannot throw out 2.6 uh, observations. So what we'll do is in this case, so the sample size is 26 as you can count here and let's say the desired trimmed mean percentage is 7.7%. So what we'll do is we will calculate n t percent that is 7.7 .7 by 100 percentage will get converted into 100 into 26 which gives us 2. So we will knock out two observations, two largest observations at the top of the sample and the two smallest observations and then calculate the sample, uh, the calculate the sample mean for the remaining 22 observations. Alright, that mean of the 22 observations will be the trimmed mean. However, if let's say n t percent is not an integer, so n t percent here was 2 and we could have thrown out 2 values from the sample from each side. But let's say if t is 10 percent, which means n t percent will be 2.6. Now we can't remove 2.6 values from the top and the bottom. So for this what we'll do is that we will calculate the trimmed mean by throwing out two observations from both sides and we will calculate the trimmed mean by throwing out three observations from both sides. So we will calculate the trimmed mean from here and the trimmed mean from here and then we will take an average of these two trimmed means to get the trimmed mean of 10%. Alright, so it sounds a bit uh, a bit complicated but when we'll do an example later on you will understand this better. The main thing is that we have to remember we are taking the average of one number below and one number above and we are calculating the means for both these and then taking the mean of those trimmed means. So it's the mean of the mean in some sense. Alright, so for to calculate the 10% trimmed mean, you will first throw out two observations, calculate the mean, then you will throw out three observations from each side, calculate the mean and the, the two means that you got in the first two steps, you will take an average of those two means. We have seen how to plot categorical data using a discrete histogram. The mean of categorical data has a special interpretation which we will just discuss now. So let's say a sample has two categories, uh, it is also known as dichotomous data, dichotomous means two. So two categories of data, let's say male, female, DU, non-DU student, Indian, non-Indian. So every person can be categorized as either a DU student or a non-DU student, they will be in one of these, exactly one of these categories. The relative frequency or the sample proportion of each category is then obtained in by dividing the frequency of that category by the sample size. So let's say x is the frequency of category 1. So let's say DU students, there are X DU students in the sample and therefore then there will be N minus X non-DU students in the sample. Just from the sample size we have subtracted the number of DU students to get the number of the other category of the remaining category. So just dividing the 
frequencies by the sample size or in other words calculating the relative frequency gives us x by n and 1 minus x by n. These are also called sample proportions because they are the proportion of the sample for this category and proportion of the sample for the other category. In this case, let's say that category, the DU category is indicated by the number 1 and the non-DU category is indicated by the number 0. So the sample mean in this case, again indicated by x bar, will be x into 1 plus n minus x into 0 divided by n. So what we are doing, since there are x DU students, each of those x get a value of 1. So we are multiplying x by 1 and there are n minus x non-DU students, each of those n minus x gets multiplied by 0. So we get just 0 here and we get x by n as our mean and this x by n however is nothing but the sample proportion of category 1. So this 0, 1 uh, classification is just for convenience and it immediately gives us this easy interpretation in terms of the sample proportion. The sample mean is nothing but the sample proportion or the relative frequency of category 1. Category 1 can be defined according to our will. So whichever category you say takes the value of 1 that is going to be called our category 1 and the sample proportion of that category and the sample mean of the data are going to be exactly the same.